afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and I source cars for people on a professional basis, hence the name of my channel, Lloyd Vehicle Consulting. Four years ago, I was asked to come up with a series of videos that were filmed inexpensively. We don't use digital cameras, we don't use fluid head tripods, we don't use shotgun microphones, we uh, wear tatty shirts, we just use a phone. But we look at cars that you can buy for a budget up to £1,000 only and we very much enjoy ourselves. These are cars that might be in cosmetically bad condition, you might see oil leaks, rattly dashboards and cosmetic imperfections but uh, we go all over the country and we find these very inexpensive cars that you all seem to enjoy watching. Predictably, viewers, here we are back <laughs> at Upper Bucklebury near Thatcham, and here we are with another pair of Volvo S40 Mark IIs. This one is a uh, 2007 1.6 S, but with some extras. Don't worry about that grill, uh, it's not an R design. Um, it is the absolute base model, but with some options on it, which is interesting because mine is. Um, an SE Sport and it's a pre facelift and it's got some options on it the 2.4 white block engine this is the 1.6 rear cars not that different this one is obviously options from new with some parking sensors and a rear spoiler for some reason which unfortunately does nothing to uh, the 99 horsepower that's under the bonnet of this one as opposed to the 168 that's under the bonnet of that one but uh, we have a look at some differences actually on these cars first of all the front front end you can see the headlamps on this are quite different and because this is uh, the SE Sport we've got fog lights we go round to this one we've got completely different headlights on this they're more like the uh, P3 um, V70 headlamps that came out the same year 2007 no fog lamps because it's only an s model the grill badge is actually larger for some reason on this in 2010 they got a different grill badge again but yeah no fog lamps on this wheels um different design entirely on this uh, S spec, it's done 130,000 miles this car actually, but it still feels good. There's a little bit of body damage on this side, but no rust or anything. These just don't seem to rust at all. The C30s do, uh, they're on the same platform, but uh, not those. I'll have a look at the rear lights and see if they're actually any different. Obviously, I can see from where I am if they are, which actually, yes, they are. You can actually see that they are they're different on both cars. We'll have a look at the interior of uh, this one first. We'll probably pop the boot actually whilst we're here. That actually, it probably is open already, so there we go. But it feels a little bit heavier, but it's probably just because of these struts are a little bit older. I've had mine replaced actually at some point, so that'll be why these might be very originals. Lift up these inserts and things, and there we go. We've got a space saver, which is great. Lee at LSB Car Sales uh, Upper Bucklebury near Thatcham in Berkshire has supplied this once again, which is very kind of him. We do like testing Volvos at Lee's place. Exactly the same uh, sort of rear space, and the door panel looks rather similar, but um, this is just a cloth interior. There's nothing particularly exciting going on here, unfortunately. Um, yeah, same sort of rear armrest and that kind of stuff. Nothing extraordinary really, cloth interior, uh, because it's the S model. At least you don't get windy rear windows in the back or anything. We haven't got the uh, pop-up um, child seats that the uh, um, 2005 S40 T5 we tested uh, recently had. Um, not really a lot to say, still got the interior that's a tiny bit on the cramped side really in the back of one of these, which is a shame. We've got lumbar support though, which is which is good, and um, 
We've also uh, also got um, some map pockets on the back. It, it just feels a lot less exciting, really, without the kind of wood inserts and things like that, and the, the, the full leather interior that the you know a lot of the SE models would have got, and things like that. It just you know it just doesn't excite me particularly. But there we go. Maybe it doesn't need to. At least we've got the uh, cup holders in here and things. And a 12 volt socket down there. Um, yeah, I've not, not really a lot else to say. We'll go and have a look at a much more luxurious interior in a moment. But facelift did introduce some changes as well. Um, on the inside, you see as well, we've got the uh, larger door mirrors. I prefer these mirrors actually, to be honest, to the earlier ones. Fog lamp switch is redundant on the left hand side there, but everything else looks similar. Um, Weirdly, we've got cruise control. We haven't got any controls of a stereo on that side. That's weird, isn't it? Maybe they just had to go up to the SE to get them or something. Five-speed manual in this one. I think it's it's actually a Ford gearbox rather than a Volvo one. I have had it referred to as a Volvo one, but there we go. Um, and, you know, it's still sort of this, I suppose, aluminium effect panel, but it's not as nice as the uh, sort of metal effect in the T5 model and it's not as nice as the one that I've got. Again, it's the S model, so what do you expect? The dials are actually slightly different for some reason in this one. We've not got some indentations around them. Uh, steering wheel is the same, dash is very similar, still got the soft touch plastic there, still got the big glove box for your secret mission documents should you require some space to put those in. And, excitingly, look at the size of these door pockets in comparison with the earlier cars. They're massive in comparison. They're still not it's not that big, but you can actually put things in them now, um, unlike before, where it was like you put your phone in and nothing else. Centre console is actually very different. You think it looks the same, but it's it's not. Um, you've got this little funny notch here, and um, things are different. There should be, I think, a bit more sort of hand like, grip on here. For some reason, that's missing on this car. I don't know why. Um, and all of them had cup holders, all of them. Whereas my, you would need a special cup holder insert to have them. Still got this kind of box there as well. Uh, no sunroof on this car either. Again, base spec with a couple of weird options. Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll have a look at the interior of um, mine in just a second. One thing I've noticed as well is the trip computer is a little bit different on this car. I don't quite know why. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just very minor differences for reasons I don't quite understand. Uh, yeah, driver door open, yes I know. Do we have... No, we haven't we, we haven't actually got the sort of trip computer type stuff in here. It's just... It's just very plain. It's got some messages and that's it. There's no... There's no kind of advanced uh, trip computer in here at all. It depends on what you want, doesn't it, viewers? We've still got the floating centre console, which is sort of... I'll angle it like this, so you can see my hand is here. Um, although it's out of focus. Also, we've not got a, 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 a footrest on the left-hand side, which you get to the automatic models. Uh, yeah. If you like your S40's poverty spec with some weird options, this is for you. Um, seats seem comfortable enough, obviously manually adjustable. Uh, fabric's okay, I suppose, but I prefer a nice leather interior of some wood viewers, as uh, all of you probably know by now. Okay. Pre facelift, it's a 2006 car. As you can see, we've got electric memory seats. We've got some wood, or fake wood, we've got leather and more leather. And uh, the center console is completely different, it's not the same at all, which um, you know means you've got to get your cup holder inserts from somewhere. It's just a bit more luxurious in here, and we've got a full trip computer even you can see even without turning it on you can see it actually gives you a temperature which it doesn't do in the other car um I'm sorry it, it uh it does but you get fewer sort of readings for some reason i'll just show you very quickly you've got a little chrome bit around the oh, that's the wrong key <laughs> whoops <laughs> that's not going to start it is it viewers? for some reason it actually turns <laughs> that's really weird there we go, look, so driver's door open, but you've got little trip computer bits like that, which, uh, thank you, lady on the adapter thing, but you've got all these bits on there that you don't get in that one. Right, uh, I suppose we'll go look under the bonnet and see 
what lies beneath. Um, I think it's the 1.6 Ford Sigma engine. Yes, those door pockets really are very tiny. Although it says Volvo on the top there, uh, yeah, this is a definitely a Ford engine. You can tell straight away by the oil filler cap and all sorts of things. Good reservoir, bizarrely, is actually the same as in uh, the 2.4 white block. So, yeah, Sigma, ZTEC, SE, um, Duratec, sometimes they used to call this. It's the engine that was first introduced in 1.25 and 1.4 litre forms with the Ford Fiesta Mark IV in 1995 and lasted until I think 2018 um, in the Ford Car Plus. Very long lived engine and generally they're quite reliable. They can have problems sometimes with the thermostat housings and things. But the biggest thing you've got to do is make sure you do the cam belt on this. But generally they're they're actually pretty good engines these. Um, it's only 99 horsepower, so this isn't the fastest, and when starting it up, you can just <laughs> sort of feel that really. But that's fine. For some people, that is that is enough in a car like this. And someone's very helpfully marked when they've done the timing belt on there. It might even be a bit easier to do the timing belt on one of these than the 2.4 white block. Um, so uh, there we go. So a gas strut, just 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 the one in this car. I think we'd better stop waffling about things like that and take it out for a drive. Excellent. As you'd expect, this base model S40 with the smallest engine feels considerably slower than either of the ones I've driven mine and the uh, T5, which both of the five cylinder model have white block in them. 0-16 this is something like 11.5 seconds, it could even be more than that actually. Um, and uh, it, it feels so much slower, but that's, that's okay actually, because not everybody wants to pay enormous amounts of money for fuel, <laughs> particularly these days. You can just chuck E10 in this and it's absolutely fine. Still haven't lost any of the sort of composure that these cars have from being based on the Ford Focus platform. Although the steering is nowhere near as direct. What I've heard from other people about this is that because the S40 was a car that was, you know, aimed in some degree to the American market, a lot of all those were in the 2000s. That's where they made a lot of their money. They kind of dulled the steering a little bit to make the car feel, in inverted commas, luxurious, which I think is really silly. Um, the steering feel is kind of still there, but it's just been sort of engineered out, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, still fun to drive though, it feels, you know, quite composed, they're very, very good long distance cruisers, these cars, as mine has been. Other engine options were um, the Mazda L engine, um, four cylinder unit in 1.8 and two litre forms with either 123 or 143 horsepower. Then the 2.4 white block with 168 horsepower. Then the T5 that was available with 216 horsepower at the beginning and then from 2007 at the time of the facelift, it was increased to 226 horsepower, a bit more in line with the uh, Focus ST. There are also some diesels available, but as usual, due to controversial government legislation and all kinds of other reasons, uh, we don't talk about diesels on this channel. So yeah, it feels like mine to drive in a way, but it just, everything just takes a little bit longer. Um, you have to sort of make the most of this very, very slick feeling five-speed manual to uh, make some progress, but that's okay. You can still buy these S40s for under a thousand pounds. It's fairly easy, really. And this car's done 130,000 miles and it feels absolutely fine. It feels really tight. Um, it's obviously been quite well looked after because we've got a cam belt change in this. 
lot of the parts as well, particularly for one like this, would be the same as the Focus, so they're not necessarily going to be that expensive. So, yes, a, a sensible car for not a lot of money, but obviously make sure that the car kind of has been um, well looked after if you are going to buy one of these. Um, because at this sort of money, there are things that could put this car sort of in the beyond economical to repair category if you weren't careful. This is a, a, a good example. I think Lee's got it advertised for 1995, which I think is uh, sort of fair money for something like this. If it's me though, obviously I prefer a bit more luxury and a bit more performance because that's the sort of person that I am. So the 2.4 white block or probably a Tilly to Mazda engine would do fine as well. But for some of you, this is how you'd like your S40 to be, albeit maybe not in this colour and maybe not with the sort of um, funny rear spoiler which makes you think it's a T5, but it is not. Let's now look at uh, some trim levels for the Mark II Volvo S40. The base model was the S, like this one, and then the SE, the SE Edition, the SE Lux, the SE Lux Edition, the SE Lux Premium, the SE Premium, the SE Sport, and the Sport. Mine is, I think, an SE Sport. Then there was the ES, um, and then lots of R designs, the R design. Edition, the R Design Premium, the R Design Premium SE, the R Design SE, and then the normal R Design. Far too many sub variants of trim levels, in my opinion, but there we go. So, viewers, should you consider this uh, base model uh, 1.6 S40? Um, I don't see why not. It's going to be probably a bit cheaper on fuel than the 2.4 white block in, uh, in mine, but because it's a five cylinder unit. and it still drives really, really well. They're based on the Mark II Focus platform, although a Volvo version of that, a longer version. And, um, you know, I, I prefer these to the Mark II Focuses. That's just my opinion. Um, even in this sort of base form, I've uh, quite enjoyed myself. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Like this video, leave a comment below. Um, thank you to Lee at LSB near Thatcham for allowing me to go in this once again. And we shall see you again soon for more inexpensive motoring.